welcome back. And uh, we're really excited to get into this conversation uh, as we talk about a group that is working on putting together a Belizean TV sitcom called Living Me Life. We have with us director Steve Berry, we have the writer Kim Vasquez, and we have producer Denver Fairweather. Good morning and welcome and welcome thank you guys. for joining us. Good Thanks morning. for having us. Yeah, you know, it's, us. it's always nice to have people like you in the studio. Reason being is because we get to get uh, information out when it comes to TV. Now, Denver, you have been doing this oh, from King Hatchet was a hammer. You've been you've been in this, you know. No, wow. no, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's it's aging the guy. I'm actually saying Denver that you have been you you actually have the wealth of knowledge. Yeah. Kim, and the Kim same too. with you, and of course, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Steve. Excellent work, guys. A Thank sitcom you. in Belize. People have been looking forward to this. Belizeans want to act, man, for real. So. I have a little anecdote. Mm -hmm. Yesterday in the newscast, we had the announcement of the new FIU uh, director, Mr. <laughs> Kurt Clare. Mm -hmm. Kent Clare. Kent. Uh, Kent Clare, sorry. <laughs> and uh, I have to say, we had a couple of people in the studio at the time who said, ooh, sorry, Mr. Clare. <laughs> it's a guy from No Matter What. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I saw that last <laughs> night, and I told my friend Oliver, I said, well, it's a good time since, good, it's a good thing since he played a corrupt politician. It didn't affect him. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> it didn't affect That's his how he did cross my mind. <laughs> and uh, the next one was, he was that minister. <laughs> he was that minister, yes. So uh, I'm glad people could separate you know, the he, television he from reality. He even had a song in the, in the, it was called The Crooked Politician. <laughs> right. And how long ago was that? That was 10 years ago. 10 years ten ago. Years a ago. long time. Yeah, it started, started 10 years ago. The yeah. ages of the persons who were sh having this conversation was from sixth form level to beyond my years, let's yes, say. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I think for me that moment is so powerful because it shows that when we have Belizean programming and people watch it and follow it, we connect with it and mm -hmm. we never let it go. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk, since your, your forte and no matter what, Mm. Uh, what has prompted you now to get back on the train and uh, try to put out another uh, local program? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, I think when it's when the dynamic duo is available, a trio, <laughs> <laughs> then the thing is, is that um, I um, run a company named 13 Productions. That's mm -hmm. right. We're a production company and we do primarily ads and documentaries. Okay. Um, however, um, meeting Steve um, uh, 11 years ago after a film festival and uh, when they had a workshop, when he came down to do some training with some of his students. Um, I always had a desire to do entertaining and effective Belizean programming beyond the news and talk shows, which is the, the less, least expensive to produce and thereby the more common. Mm -hmm. And um, we shared the same idea of trying to tell Belizean stories professionally. And yeah. that's where he as a technical, um, the director and the person that brings the technical backing to it, um, helps us to take it up to the next level. So we, um, we, have, we embarked on four seasons of No Matter What, at points when Steve was able to take sabbaticals from Howard University. Now I've retired, so... Um, oh, so I'm, they have all I'm, your I'm, I'm, I'm re reinventing myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So since he has retired, we basically became available, and so we decided to let's, let's get back on horse and get it done again. And we always like to try to do first, in terms of in Belize, in terms of consistent programming. So yeah. we did No Matter What as a, for, as a drama, mm -hmm. and so we did four seasons of that. Okay. And the public has been asking for it. Um, however, we decided let's try to some, something, something a little lighter in terms of a sitcom. Yeah. And then we may actually go back into doing another drama next year. What's okay. the difference between a sitcom yeah. and a drama? Uh, you laugh a lot more in a sitcom <laughs> if it's done right. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and, and the dramas tend to be one, an hour long of television time, okay. and the sitcom is a half hour. Okay, so it's, so it's shorter. Now, Kim, yes. um, writing is not something that comes easy, uh, come easy to, to, to folks. You've got to have the mentality to, you have to see wide and far. <laughs> that much I could say. How easy was this for you? How hard is it for you in terms of writing? And what do you say to people who want to write? Because there are a lot of people with ideas, but they just don't know how to put it on That's paper. True. Yeah. Um, it's, it is hard. Um, I'm, I, I wish I could sit here and tell you that it's easy. Mm -hmm. It's hard because, um, you know, I, I work a full-time job. Mm -hmm. You know, many people know me from niche. I'm still a program officer and I, okay. I love what I do. I get to work in the arts and with youths. But writing is my first passion. And I, I wanted to return 
to something for the screen. You know, I, I, I've been, I've done other things in the past 10 years, yeah. but I, I, and I, and I like a challenge. And so um, without even meeting with Denver, I started to develop the idea for a sitcom. Okay. And, you know, I, I started to flesh out some characters and what I thought a pilot episode would look like. Um, along with a couple other episodes and you know and so I met with Denver and I pitched the idea to the big shot producer big <laughs> shot. and as he said the, the timing was right you know he had you know he had been on the same train of thought but you know it's it's not it's not easy I, I won't lie you know I'm, I'm a mom I have a toddler mm. I have a full-time job um, and so it, it, it's hard. So and you so don't sleep. You write when you should sleep. I I I don't sleep. Yeah. I don't sleep. I'm 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 probably operating maybe like on two <laughs> hours of sleep right now. Wow. Right. And and it's and it's been like this for some time because even before going into this or mm -hmm. pre preparing to write th uh, the actual pilot um, and revise it, I had been working on something for the September celebration. So it's just it, it's from one thing to the next and from going from stage to to screen. But to say that people that want to write. I would say you just have to do it. Yeah. You know, no excuses. Writers are the biggest procrastinators. And it's, it's hard to stare at that blank page, but you just have to apply your bottom to the seat and your fingers to the keyboard and start getting your work done. We could also and hope uh, that inspiration comes yes. at the same yes. time. Yes. Yeah, and we could yeah. also, um, you know, use if there are any other, you know, Belizeans out there who want to write, have a passion and desire mm -hmm. to write, to actually write, you know, episodes, you know, for, you know, the series. If they're interested, they could reach out to Denver, you know, 13 Productions and, you know, I mean, if that's what they want to do, because we, we're looking at what we talk about at 10 episode 12 wow. <laughs> and what's like, I tried to cut it down Let, a let's bit. just clearly state <laughs> what phase we are in the, the production of the, this TV sitcom so yeah. people can know whether they can jump on board what they need to do blah blah okay. well. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. We have a name. Uh, right, right. We have the title. We have some um, cast. I've, I've actually written the theme song. Again, I also wrote the theme song for No Matter What. Ooh. So, you know, I'm trying to, you know. Are you going to sing it for us right now? No. <laughs> no, I'll leave it on paper. I'll leave it on paper. <laughs> uh, but we've cast. We have the, the main cast, you know, okay. actually cast right now. There we go. And, oh, yeah. And there's a Not cast. Not those versus those are just generic images. Yeah, those oh, are generic okay. images. Mm -hmm. um, but we've play. cast, and actually, we plan to uh, go into production this week weekend uh, to actually start you know for the pilot this week for, right, for the, the pilot, pilot. Right. first episode right we plan to do the pilot you know um, you know this month and edit it in December I think I'll be coming back in January so we can actually start the uh, the production on the actual episodes okay. All right. but casting is still open um, because um, we we'll, as I said we are going to have somewhere between six and twelve episodes okay um, and um, so we will need characters for that will come in in yes, different episodes where we have different teams and topics. You know? So if you, if you ever wanted to try out, you know, this would be a good opportunity. Okay. Yeah. What? And uh, because, I, I, you know, we were talking about uh, casting it and, uh, and whatnot. I want to know about living my life. Kim. Yes. Talk to us about living my life. Give, 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 us, give us a slight uh, 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 story about it so we could see exactly where this will be going. I wanted to do something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So I went with um, a young Belizean professional. He's in his early 20s. And he is um, a mommy's boy. Mm. So he has everything going for him. He's smart, handsome, charming. He has a good job. He's climbing the career ladder. But like many young Belizeans, he's stuck living at home with mommy. Mm -hmm. And mommy is cray cray. <laughs> 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 right? She don't play. She don't play. And so um, that is the source of much of the conflict. And um, also, he has his, his best friend um, with him as well. And there's also two single girls that rent the upstairs apartment from Myrtle, who's the mom. Mm -hmm. Oh. So all of them have the aspirations is she and a dreams. Is landlady too? Uh, of course she'll be. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so all of these young, these young characters, they have many of the dreams and ambitions that a lot of young Belizeans have, especially in Belize City. Yeah. Because it is based in Belize City. And, and so they're trying to climb the career ladder. They're trying to pursue um, career dreams. One of them wants to be an artist. Um, and so th they all face these challenges. But they take it on in a humorous way. Now, I'm so glad we got into that because I think one of the questions I had was looking at, one, your target audience, but the, yeah. the characters themselves. Yes. We're, we're in a very interesting time yes. where uh, 
perhaps if you are to write something, it could be for people who remember all the old time stories yes. and the old time Belizean characters and personalities. And now it's very different. Yes. Are you working to kind of tie in a little bit of uh, historically what people would be used to? Even in terms of the jokes, you know, you can bring up somebody, I don't know, Ramsey and Emuel. Yes. And you could tell that to a 20 year old and ask you, hmm? Yeah. What are you talking about? I think that's, that's, that's for me where I brought in the character Myrtle. Okay. Because I was definitely trying to, to look, I, even, even as thinking ahead as to what, how we would get this out. Yeah. You know, um, everything is on the net now. Mm -hmm. um, you have web series on YouTube. Yeah. And so you do have a, a hunger, I think, Belizean, the, the younger population would like to laugh and they would like to have something that they can relate to. But I, I did realize that, yes, you know, we need to have that bridge between the mm -hmm. previous generation and the current generation. And so that's, that's still a challenge for me, but it's something that, you know, I'm definitely keeping in mind when I work on the scripts. And there's what? another character uh, that she also has, uh, Patience, who is one of um, Myrtle's church friends. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, you know, we will be able to actually There's several yeah. older yeah. characters. There's, um, there's Harry's boss, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's, there's a mix. Yeah. It'd be great to see that how the generation gap works out. Because yes. it, it's present even in Belize. We just don't really look at it. Right. And, and in terms of um, our target audience for the viewership of the show, as with, no matter what, it's a family audience. I yeah. mean, although most of the characters will be in their 20s and, and, and above, mm -hmm. it will touch on all aspects of Belizean life and, and the average um, Belizean scenarios, telling stories and also teaching lessons. That's okay. what we always, we always try to do in the background of what we do in terms of entertainment programs. And how did you guys gather the, the actors for this? Because a lot of folks out there, again, they want to act. Yeah, yeah well, actually, um, we, between um, Kim um, identifying some people that have groups of actors, um, we tapped into, like, uh, actually, a, a former cast member, Charmaine, mm -hmm. who you all are familiar with. Who doesn't know Charlie? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's actually one of our cast members. She's Myrtle. She, I was just going to say that. She's an actress. Yeah, she worked with us no matter what. Um, and, and she um, referred us to some people who are yes. seasoned actors. We also put out a flyer um, on our um, Facebook page. Okay. Um, and we can be reached at 610 13 13 for those who are interested in acting. 610 13 13 or um, 13 Productions um, on Facebook. Okay. Or mm -hmm. look us up in the phone book. Um, we're already Great. There. And, um, and basically, um, by putting out a flyer and also checking with people who um, have acting experience, we, mm -hmm. we, I think we auditioned about what, 20 people? 20, 25. Mm -hmm. And we basically came up with the premier five characters that we were looking for. Okay. However, as I said, we still have room for extras and we do have other shows that we'll be doing in the future. So those with acting interest um, and experience could always contact us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, Steve, yes. that, that, how difficult it is to, to be to, to direct, especially a sitcom, um, like, like we mentioned, it's much more shorter than a drama. Uh, it's only half an hour, but then again, it's a lot of work. Uh, directing, yeah. you have to you have to make sure everybody is on par. Everybody, is, uh, you know, everybody make sure is right the jokes there. Work. Yeah. Yes. So how is how difficult Actually. is this for you? Well, I mean, I'm I'm excited. About mm -hmm. it. I am really excited about it, and um, this is my first actual foray into comedy. Mm. You know. Now the thing is, although I'm much better now. But I swear to God, the first day of production on No Matter What. Now, I, I'd read the script. I knew the script. I knew what these people were supposed to be saying. But when I was on the set, and I won't count because I also shoot, I didn't know what the heck they were saying. Because if somebody was talking, I had the camera on them. If somebody was talking, I had the camera on them. So a lot of times it's like the dialect and the Creole kind of, you know, throws me for a loop just a bit. But I've, I've gotten much better over the last, you know, 12 years. Um, but the thing is, you know, again, the cast that we've got right now, you know, I'm really excited about. I think we had a phenomenal cast for No Matter What. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that the cast for, you know, this one is going to be just as powerful. Excellent. Mm. Excellent. And, and <laughs> someone said in Hollywood, they said that casting is like 70% of the job. I'd okay. say it's 90%. Okay. Wow. Because if you cast the right um, actor in a role, they can do things to that character you never even think about as a director. Mm -hmm. But if you cast the wrong person, it's like trying to you know, pull teeth or something because you just can't get it right and yes. you want to just grab them by the throat. But <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't do that. who played Grand Tomasa in the yeah. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, and how lucky we were to find, and then she sort of became this, she couldn't walk down yeah. the street without people going, Grand Tomasa, Grand Tomasa, you know? Yeah, they embodied the, yes. the, the she character. She just took on that character and just brought it to life. 
Now, a project like this, mm -hmm. and, and I think you know, key elements of what you said earlier in terms of uh, knowing that there's a hunger for this type of uh, program, wanting to be able to get something that will target specifically the young people right now, share their reality, which we don't talk about. Mm -hmm. But how do you fund it? Uh, who, I mean, we know, uh, well, I can say we know who are in the industry that it's a very expensive undertaking. It, yes. it takes a lot of time. If you put off a play, for example, you have actors working all in the night because they do have full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and I expect it probably be much of the same with you guys. How are you going to pull this all together at this point? Okay. Well, uh, the, the thing with um, entertainment-based programming, it is a bit more tedious than the, the mainstream programming like um, news and mm -hmm. live broadcasts. Um, we basically have to spend on average in production, a few weeks in pre-production, um, a couple of weeks shooting for one episode. Mm -hmm. So it will require, and, and the way how it's funded is basically advertising. Mm -hmm. So um, we, would, uh, we, we are in the process of doing the pilot, and with the pilot in hand, we will be then um, approaching the business community yeah. and advertisers. And we believe we, um, as we've shown with no matter what, that um, we produce a potent program that, as you said, people are remembering characters and remembering stories and would want to see it 10 years later. Mm -hmm. So it will be something that, um, although it's not the mainstream programming, because it is a niche program, mm -hmm. it will have its dedicated viewership. It will have um, a significant amount of buzz and follow. You know, you, you know, you watch a newscast today, watch another newscast tomorrow, you might not remember what you saw yesterday or mm -hmm. last week. But with a show like this, people will be talking about the stories, the characters, and yeah. it's something like, no matter what, it was kind of like a, almost a culture, like people really assimilated to it. Yeah. And, and, and that's why with this team, with myself, Steve and, um, Steve and Kim, um, who've gone through that experience, um, as I said, we, we, we took a while to do something because we wanted to do it when we were all available and focused to, 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 to give that full 100% effort. And one thing that I'm really excited about too, and, and, and pleased with is, um, you know, Black Orchid um, uh, Resort has actually come on already. In fact, we will be shooting a lot of scenes actually on their location. Mm -hmm. And uh, Douglas has been just, you know, great. He basically expressed an interest and came on in. So, you know, as long as everyone, you know, follows his lead, you know, then, <laughs> then we will be all right. And that's because that's the thing, too, in terms of you need to you need to make sure that you've got the right location yes. so this thing could yes. be you know so it could be a hit because location is very important yes. mm -hmm. uh how difficult or how, how easy is that uh, then for everybody everybody would jump on board for the fact that well i would think because of the uh the uh, successes of no matter what what about some of the locations that we'll be shooting at where well, where? well uh, it's a sitcom so it's primarily um indoor locations we will do some outdoor as um as seen as narrows um, um call for it um but for the most part, we have the main location for the primary um, living environment okay. set through the assistance of um, Black Orchid Arcane. and um, Douglas. Um. Which is something else that we were concerned about because doing no matter what, we actually use people's actual homes. So while we were in there shooting, you know, we had to actually run them out. Yeah. You know, and say, yeah, well, we'll be done by 8 <laughs> o'clock. So <laughs> right, right. And then, and then they come example. home at 8 o'clock and we're still shooting, so they have to sit outside waiting. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, it was, it was a, and then sometimes the neighbors would turn up their music. Yeah, and then you have to go after the things in the background. Yeah. But yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't but neighbors or, or, or local noise be a compliment to what you're shooting well uh, when or you're doing anything? production you have to do multiple takes and okay. you have to like piece a shot that you took so you know, one of the audio line yeah. thing and one at <laughs> right? yeah, 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 it's yeah. going to be very obvious we wanted oh to look good at the end but it, we can't have all the real distractions <laughs> as we're doing okay. I, I gotta ask one more question and we're running out of time very quickly kim how <laughs> difficult is it to be able to write the comedic portion you know uh jokes and please go a full range. Yes. <laughs> there, uh, the roll your eyes kind of joke like, no. Nah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then there the, sm the slight chuckle yes. and then the belly full laugh. Right. So what are we aiming for here? You know, I'm hoping that you have belly laughs, mm -hmm. but I did not want to go slapstick. Okay. You know, um, that's not that's not my my style of comedy. It's yeah. not it's not really what I prefer. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think we're so used to that. In, in Belize, but yet we could watch a foreign sitcom and we still laugh. Yeah, we have huge followings of foreign sitcoms, yeah. and so um, for me, like I said, um, many people don't know this, but you know, I I, I actually uh, enjoy a good joke, and you know, some people say <laughs> you seem so serious, but if you get to know me, uh -huh. I'm actually quite humorous, 
And so, you know, I did really want to give this a try in yeah. terms of writing comedy. And I have written comedic things before, yeah. but not for television. Okay. Yeah. I've also thought, and we've discussed, I've discussed it with, uh, with the rest of the creative team, what, how, how I would like to open is something I would call the, uh, the, the, the Living Me Life Laugh Camp. And, uh, you know, I just have people, you know, do, you know, their own selfie, tell us a joke. You know, and then actually open, you know, with, you know, living me life, life, you know, joke cam, hear the joke, you know, and then go into the show. Yeah. You know, I'd like to do that. Um, timing's going to be, you know, crucial. And of course, might be some other logistical, you know, elements yeah, as far yeah, as, you know, the work material. Yeah. yeah. But I'd like to do that. I mean, to actually give it the, the, the real, you know, living, people living me life, telling me jokes and, you know, making it happen like that. Misty is not me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to let it slide that way. Yeah. Well, okay, no, you asked me before <laughs> how it's <laughs> difficult directing. I said, my, me, my, me. I mean, it's just uh, so it, crucial it, around it's here. It's so humorous because, you know, he, he, got this, he got this script and he started making revisions. Uh -huh. And then it came back. And I'm like, we don't say these things in Belize. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole thing. It's all about yeah. twisting it and but will shifting you, it. But will you uh, perhaps But his Creole is actually audience? pretty good now. Oh, his Creole well, has it's better yeah, than we see more issue. and more how people do the English Creole mix, and mm -hmm. especially if you want to get up into the Caribbean, yes. for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's what Especially we're looking at. We're, we're also looking at that, yeah. 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 that aspect, yeah. Yeah. yeah, to basically expand yeah. our markets. Yes. Yeah. As, as far as as well as you know the rest of the world, like in, in preparing for this, mm -hmm. I went and um, watched some of the online YouTube um, you know sitcoms from other Caribbean countries, and some of them they're just very really deep in dialect. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and I watched for. 10, 15 seconds, Lost. you know, and yeah. I'm not even into it. And then some have subtitles, I might watch a little longer, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, but there's a much broader market that mm -hmm. we hopefully, you know, yes. will be able to get to or need to but try to get to. It will be Creole, but it won't be that broad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Nice. Great. So now people are going to be clamoring. When, when, when will we see it? <laughs> All right. Well, basically, as I said, we're in a pilot stage. Yeah. Um, we intend to go into full production in January when Steve is back, as he has to head back to the States in mid-November. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Um, but um, I am aiming most likely um, for March for mm -hmm. us to be on air. Okay. Okay, because that gives us time to basically, um, you know, get the episodes done. So we're not doing like what Steve <laughs> had a problem with, no matter what. Where we are yeah, one we're editing and running into the station at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Racing over here. Yeah, yeah. And um, it gives us time to basically, um, uh, as I said, go out there, get sponsors, um, get the broadcasting arrangements made with the different stations. Hopefully Channel 5 will be on board with us. And all and, and, and stuff of that nature. But the thing is, is to get it to the Belizean public. And once, you get it, once the public gets it, they, they should love it. Yes. Now, uh, and of course, as you pointed out, you are still uh, taking people in mm -hmm. as additional cast members. Uh, do they have to audition first? Do I just have to have well, a dream of a cameo? Or? Basically, all they have to do is contact um, contact 13 Productions mm -hmm. eight, um, at 610 1313 13, or 227 uh -huh. 1313. 13, and we're in the phone book. Okay. Or, um, or call uh, or, um, uh, yeah, email us. At the yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're upstairs of the Dunas building. We have a sign downstairs. Okay. And um, or they could email A13Pro at Hotmail. And we're looking for, again, writers too. Because you know, again, uh, 12, 10, 8, mm -hmm. 6, mm -hmm. however many episodes, <laughs> you know. And Kim, like I said, she's a full time mother. <laughs> and, uh, so we could use, use some assistance in writing as well. So, All right. So, John, there you go. We might see you in what? Living my life? <laughs> uh, you, you, you know how it is. We, I, we take care of business. Hey, but we, guys, we, we, we can write an episode. We can write an episode. And, 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 and you guys oh, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know how great my acting skills will be, but <laughs> <laughs> that might be part of the uh, joke. We can write around the show, around the show, around the show. You know, you know uh, it, it, it is already uh, providing laughs, that much we could say. So we know for a fact that it's going to be something great. We're looking actually forward to this. All right. So thank you so much so much Thank for coming much. in and letting us know that this is happening because uh, as I said that story yesterday I know <laughs> Belize is ready for more yes. entertainment and you guys will be delivering it right. Right? Good to be back thanks all right. All, right. all right we're gonna go ahead and take that final break now and when we come back we'll have our wrap-up so stay tuned